right, just drilled the first hole. Let's get to work here. That's hooked up. Nice job. Nice a, job. A well, that, that didn't take long, did it? No. Excellent I was, job. I wasn't paying attention, and I looked down, and it was camped out on me. So you called me yesterday, and you said, I got on walleyes. And the interesting part that we're going to talk about throughout this segment is how close these walleyes are underneath the ice, right? Yeah. And it's unbelievable. So what we're going to do is, when we get into this, we're going to talk about fishing different parts of the water column and catching fish. There's one. Great white. Ah, there's one. Ah. Here we go. This one should be a nice one. He came in about uh, four or five feet underneath the ice. I wasn't paying much attention and I looked at my bait and it was all, it was too red, too, too big of a mark for my bait. So I picked it up and he was there. Just gave it a couple of pops and he ate it. I'm guessing that they have the uh, minnows are right below the ice. You know, for every ice shove and you see the ice poking up, there's a certain amount of that that's also poking down. And that's, that's good uh, cover for minnows that are hiding and so, Years ago, the first time I ever noticed fish up high, we also noticed that their dorsal fins were kind of beat up. And I think that's from, uh, from cruising right underneath the ice and uh, chasing minnows. Oh, look at how he ate that bait. Just choked it. That was your typical mark the fish and, and race up and get him to commit and just eat it. We're out here, we're not tipping any live bait. These horizontal baits, these minnow type baits like this hyper rattle, they're designed to, to fish a certain way and swim a certain way. And I'm a believer that as soon as you start tipping it with minnow heads and stuff, a lot of times it deters the action. And out here in this body of water, these fish like stuff fast. Re uh, they want to react. And I want this bait to work the way it's designed and that's the results of them eating it just like that. As ice fishermen, we're always accustomed to fishing within two feet of the bottom is always kind of the textbook. Then a lot of times I have, and a lot of people have talked about staying four or five feet off the bottom. But what's really interesting on this body of water today is we've realized this winter that these fish are three, four, five feet underneath the ice. And I'm talking 14, 17 feet of water. And a lot of times your mark marks that high and you don't even pay attention to them. And that's where the walleyes have been a lot of the winter is right under the ice and they must be chasing groups of minnows and ambushing them. So let's see if we can get one right underneath the ice here. I just had one four feet under the ice and you wouldn't fire. Oh, hooked up, Matt. Oh, it feels like a good what fish. What you got? Feels like a good fish. Boy, you just dropped us on this new spot. That was awesome. You came flying right in. What we got here? Oh, it's a nice fish. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. Beauty. Hyper red all on his grill. Look at that. That was awesome. Nice Boy, it's been the same deal all day. These fish have been super high in the water column. Hey, Matt? Yeah, it seems like the later on that we get in the year, the fish keep on getting higher and higher, chasing minnows just underneath the ice. I mean, it's unbelievable. I caught a short one that we didn't film a couple minutes ago, and I literally felt like I caught that fish. It bit like right inside the bottom of the hole. It's unbelievable. So remember, stay high in the water column when you see those marks. Get your bait up there and check it out. It might not always be game fish, but this could be the results. Matt, I don't know if you know, this is a sauger. Uh, Oh the, yeah, you're right. The dorsal fins, if they're spotted, that is a sauger. Don't look at the tip of the tail or anything. This is the way that the DNR will identify it is by spots on the dorsal. And that's a big sauger, right? That's a dandy. There's a lot of big ones out here. Yeah, we haven't been catching too many uh, smaller ones, medium. They're, they've pr all been pretty much uh, about this size. And what's the deal with the top there with, with some of that beating up on the fin? My belief is that they come up and they and they are chasing minnows right up tight against the ice and they sometimes will get a little beat up here on their, on their dorsal. That's unbelievable. We have seen fish literally right under the ice yep, today. right tight. 
Oh, there it is. Right under the ice. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Just change up to the glow color because that sun's just about at the treetop. So that's a nice 15, 16 inch eater. So I tell you what, one big mistake that people make a lot of times is when you mark a fish on your flasher and you start getting that fish to rise up, a lot of people freeze. That's a big no-no. You have to make sure that you keep coming up, coming up, coming up and get that fish to commit, right Matt? The natural thing that the minnow is going to try to do is get away from the fish. So Absolutely, don't freeze. Can. Just keep, and that's exactly how I just caught this fish right underneath the ice. Well, it's been a great day chasing walleyes or underneath the ice. You definitely showed me something today. So I want to thank Matt for putting us on these walleyes today. You can check out his guide service at Badger Sportsman's Outdoors. I'm Matt Pachanich with Acme Tackle and Midwest Outdoors. We'll be right back.